Welcome to Victory Lane at Daytona International Speedway. I'm your trackside host, Phil Shader. It's home of the Tennessee Titans News Channel 11 Sports in Nashville tonight as the Titans trying to make their second Super Bowl appearance in the last four years. Hi, everyone. I'm Phil Shader. Three years ago on this field, the Titans beat the Buffalo Bills in the Music City Miracle. Welcome back to our Hoop Preview Show. We're in Knoxville, and the Lady Vols would have liked to put another championship banner on the Raptors here at the Thompson Bowling Arena. 4-1 and one overall, 1-1 one and one in the Wataga Conference. They're only a game out of first place. Tonight, they were hoping to write another chapter by beating rival South Green and get that milk can back. The Tennessee Vols warming up in the Georgia Dome, getting ready for the SEC title game. Hi everyone, I'm Phil Shader, live at Bailey's as our SEC title preview show rolls on, getting ready for LSU and Tennessee tonight. Free baseball tonight in Johnson City. Hi everyone, I'm Phil Shader with sports. Last night, Johnson City Cardinals knocked the Elizabethan Twins out of first place in the Happy League West Division with a 4-3 win. Tonight, the same two teams went at it in Johnson City. It was free night at the Cardinal Park, and the Irwin Healthcare softball team taking advantage of that. 1-0 Johnson City in the fourth inning. Kevin House, former University of Memphis outfielder, rips this ball up the middle, knocking in a run. It was 2-0 Johnson City. Still in the fourth, T. Thomas of Mississippi Valley State, the College of... Jerry Rice, football fame, knocks in another Cardinal run. The big fourth inning was capped off by a two-run home run by Tanner Wooten. It was a five-run fourth inning, but the E-Twins come back to tie the game before the Cardinals win it in the bottom of the eighth as we go to the scoreboard. Johnson City wins for the second straight night, eight to seven. And Bristol, they remain the leaders in the West Division. They take care of the Kingsport Mets and Mookie Wilson's team tonight, five to four. Well, the Davy family Winnebago made a trip from Little Rock, Arkansas to Johnson City, Tennessee for the third straight year. Johnson City is just a stop off and a long road for the Davies Winnebago. Hopefully the final stop will be outside of Bush Stadium right in downtown St. Louis. At 6'5 and 240 pounds, the blonde-haired big guy is hard to miss. Most Abbey League players just pass through for a few short months. Andrew Davey has made Johnson City his summer home for the last three seasons. He is a veteran among rookies on his team. We, we all know that we got to come together, and uh, as, far as, as far as leadership goes, I think it's, I think it's really important. Uh, been here three years now. I think it's it's time for me to take over and take a leadership role. Davey was drafted out of high school from Little Rock, Arkansas by the St. Louis Cardinals in the 32nd round. For the past three years, his family has packed in their Winnebago and made the trip to Johnson City to see Andrew trying to keep his dream of playing in the majors alive. I don't know. We knew nothing about Johnson City until he came out here with baseball, but uh, he, uh, he, he was a little disappointed in being here this year, but uh, he's going to take it and run with it. I think this is probably the best thing for me this year, come out here and put up good numbers this year and maybe maybe step up to Peoria next year and just skip over Jersey. That's, that would be nice. Davey is known for crushing the ball. He's second in the Appy League with five home runs. He's batting 288 with four doubles and 12 RBIs. A few stats holding Davey back. He has struck out 23 times and has made four errors in the field this season. But his dad says Andrew knew the road to the big leagues was going to be a long one. And there was, uh, he, he was recruited by the University of Arkansas and had a scholarship there and knew that professional baseball was going to be a long, uh, hard road. He knew he wasn't going to just walk into it. But this is what he wanted to do, and he didn't want distractions like fraternities and schoolwork and stuff like that to get in his way. Uh, but he's, he's still pursuing a dream. I mean, he's still on the right track. Tough night for AD tonight. He went 0 for 4 after the big leagues. Braves have won four straight at Chase Stadium to take on the Mets. Vinny Castilla, 13th homer of the season. Two run home run in the sixth inning, giving the Braves a 5 2 lead. In the eighth, the Braves were up 5 to 3, but the bases were loaded for the Mets, and it's bong time. He gets the bounce into the 1 2 3 double play to get out of the inning. Then in the ninth, John Smoltz, you know the game's over. Smoltz's 33rd save. That leads the majors. Shane Reynolds, he gets the win, his first since June the 12th, the final. 5-3. to three. It's almost football time in Tennessee, and if you want to see the Tennessee Titans in person this season, you need to get in line. The line is already forming at the Coliseum. Tickets for all 10 Titans home games and the team scrimmage with the Miami Dolphins August the 2nd will go on sale this Saturday at 10 a.m. That's Central Time, so 11 a.m. our time. Fans may purchase tickets online at Ticketmaster.com or by phone. You can get the Number on our website, WJHL.com. Last season, the tickets were sold out in about 10 minutes. If you don't get a ticket, you can watch all the Titans games all season long on your TV home of the Tennessee Titans right here on News Channel 11. That'll do it tonight in sports. We feature the big guy, his family in all the way from Little Rock, and he has a tough night, but I think he'll bounce back. The guy can hit the ball a mile. He just got to cut down on those strikeouts talking about Andrew Davey. He was just nervous. He was nervous. I think I could beat Tiger Woods maybe in putt-putt golf. 
How's your putt-putt game? The best putt-putt players in the world were in Bristol this weekend for the Tennessee State Championship. Grab a putter. I want that yellow ball. That's my lucky ball. Let's go to the turf. Welcome back to our continuing coverage with the leader, Peter Newman, on 18. Real nice finishing hole here, par two. The green elevated about two feet in the air. Newman needs just a par to win the Tennessee State Putt-Putt Championship. Newman, he plays a conservative. He'll get the par and win the tournament with a 108 score through 72 holes for Peter Newman. The level. competition out here is uh, pretty intense. Uh, we're not playing for the uh, amount of money the PGA Tour or a lot of the other major sports, but uh, you know all your peers are out here. You certainly want to play well, and uh, even if you're coming down the stretch playing for uh, a couple hundred dollars first place check, it uh, puts a lump in your throat. You, you think twice about it. Uh, coming down the stretch. With the win, the Blacksburg Virginia man takes home $375. The Professional Putter Association plays about 50 to 60 events a season with prize money totaling $200,000 for 170 pro putt-putt players. This marks the first stop of the PPA Tour in Tennessee in about a decade. In case you wanted to know, hole number seven was playing the toughest on the old Bristol Highway putt-putt course. Let's take a fly over this very difficult par two. The toughest hole by far is probably hole seven, the drop-off hole. Uh, it's a, a very good age. A lot of players, I think almost everybody really expects to make it, but if you miss it, uh, you can certainly take three, four, or five on it. Uh, I'd expect uh, at least a couple people in the field had their hopes stashed this weekend on hole seven. So you think you got what it takes to be a pro putt-putt player? Meet the world record holder, Mike Brown. Can you top this? He made 54 hole-in-ones and 72 holes for a total of 90. He set that record in 1999. So the next time you pick up the putter and a colored ball, you have something to shoot for. What does it take to turn the lap around the world's fastest half mile? Today, just your John Hancock on a Richard Petty driving experience contract. Then it's off to get fitted for your driver's suit. Kenny Hawkins size, here's here. the XXXL. This is just an XL, fits nice, nice and snug. I'm ready. World's fastest half mile. Gonna take it. Before taking it, a helmet and a safety device, and I was ready for the green flag. No one better than the king, you know that. No one better than the king. I was happy to see my car. Nothing better than the king's old 43. Got a little nervous when I saw the crew looking under the hood. Don't be nervous. You just sit there, enjoy yourself. Uh, you leave the driving up to us, and uh, it's been here two years, and I've been as safe as I could be. I've never had any accidents, so we'll keep you safe today. After sliding in and buckling up, I was ready to go. You're in fourth gear, you just pedal to the metal and just get it through the corners. You don't use too much braking at a place like this. Obviously, because of the ba the banking through the corners, you don't need much braking. Um, just kind of enjoy yourself. It's a great place to have fun at. Riding the high banks, I felt like an in-car camera. No pain on the wall for George to take care of, but I was pretty darn close to it, especially right here in the front stretch, real close, real close to the wall, too close for comfort. Three hours in that thing. The sign says, ride or drive. Next time, I'm getting behind the wheel. At the Bristol Motor Speedway, Phil Shaner, News Channel 11 Sports. It's also the last regular season game for a very important part of the ETSU Bucks sports family. Someone who is pretty noticeable at Bucks basketball games. We have a chance. We need to hit some first. And intensity and on the sideline and, and enthusiasm and energy. And I think it's a credit to our school. Coach Ed DeCellis is not describing one of his players. He's talking about Jeff McCorkle, a political science major who's been taking classes at ETSU for the last 11 years. But Jeff has another identity. He is super fan. Hey, watch the reach in fouls down on this end, ref. Hey, I'm glad you finally decided to call something. And since 92, I've been hoping for to get back to the good old days and they had Mr. Jennings and everything, and now I think we're starting to get there. Super fan is one of the first things new recruits or first-time visitors to the Mini Dome notice. Now, the first time I saw Soup was at a volleyball game. I just looked up and he was running back and forth and doing uh, jumping jacks and stuff. And I was like, who is that guy? Like Soup, super fan. I noticed him from the first day I was here. You know, uh, that first game we played in Brooks, I saw him running around dancing. I didn't know who he was at first. Uh, everybody came to notice him and tell me a little bit about him. Yeah, we got to start hitting some shots to keep them from scoring. As you can tell, Super fan plays a major role at the men's games, but he's just one of four thousand screaming Buck fans. Superfan also is a regular at the Lady Bucks games. Coach Karen Kemp tells me Superfan helps her with the officials. That's the one thing I like about him. And, you know, he, he tells me that he sees me giving him the sign to go and get on the ref, but I, I really don't do that. Try to call something! Yeah, you better make up 
Fred, choke you just called down here. Come, come game day, I get, oh, I get it's, it's all in my stomach till I get here, and then I just get to let it all out. And he does let it all out. Super fan takes his buck sports very serious. So much, it's hard for him to sit still. He is well known for just running around the court. <laughs> what soup is it but every, everywhere he goes he's always happy and he's always cheering for the bucks he's, he's our number one fan and that's why he got the name super fan let's go boss let's go now that's some fan no that's etsu super fan <laughs> wow that is soup jeff told me he is taking his super fan show on the road he'll be in charleston this week to cheer his bucks in the Southern Conference Tournament, and we will meet. How is your golf game? If you're struggling a little bit, this story update might motivate you or frustrate you even more. It's time to visit with a golfer who shoots in the 70s. We first introduced you to Zach Potts three years ago. Since then, he's grown a few inches and added about 100 yards onto his drive. Zach is now six years old and is the U.S. Kids Golf Tennessee State champ. He picked up the game when he was just 19 months old. His first club was a fly swatter, then a set of plastic clubs. He's now qualified to give golf tips. Don't bend your elbows. Is that straight? Mm-hmm, no fault. Don't get off your balance. Zach shoots in the low 70s with a lot of birdies and even a few eagles on his home course at the ridges, which he says isn't much of a challenge for him anymore. It's pretty easy. It is? It's easy? Mm -hmm. Why do you say it's easy? Like most golfers, Zach is still looking for that perfect shot. Making a hole one. <laughs> you ever make a hole one? No. Did you get close? Mm, yeah. You did get close. Once I got this far away, I'm yeah. making a hole one. That far? Yeah. Yeah, he has a couple more years to work on getting that hole in one. Now, before you quit golf altogether because a six-year-old is shooting lower scores than you, let me explain. He plays about a 2,000-yard setup for 18 holes. In August, Zach played in the U.S. Kids Golf World Championship, where he finished ninth overall in a field of 54 state and national champs from all around the world. For Zach's dad, Ernie, golf is just a great way to spend time with his son playing a game which can help teach valuable life lessons. <laughs> Zach right at you for sure. Zach told me that golf really isn't his favorite sport. Really? He likes baseball first, then golf, and finally third is soccer, which is, he's playing right now. But what a great kid, and he has a long future uh, hitting that Did golf ball. A few, and I'll, I'll use them coming up in my next, uh, next round of golf. There is an art to shooting free throws, and this nine-year-old from Fall Branch School is like a young Picasso when it comes to shooting foul shots. At the district, I made 25 for 25. After Brianna Maringring won the district Elks free throw contest, she went on to hit 19 of 25 to win the Tennessee state title. She does it with perfect form, time after time. You know, I just dribble three times each, each shot. I just get my hand right here. I don't do this. I just do this, and I just put my knees and jump and shoot. Next up for Brianna will be the regional tournament on March the 8th. If she wins that, she goes to Nationals in Springfield, Massachusetts. Of course, that's the home of the Basketball Hall of Fame. If she wins there, she gets her name in the Hall of Fame. Brianna says having her name in the Hall of Fame would be neat, but her goal is to play for a coach who's already in the Hall. She even put her dream on paper in a poem called Pat's Call. I want to be a lady lost. Please set some that want you call. I want to wear the orange and white. I sure do hope you call tonight. My phone lines, I will keep three just in case you try to call me. Playing for you is really neat, even though it's from my seat. The lady balls are really cool. I want to go to your great school. Coach Summit could use an artist who's mastered free throw shooting and poetry. In Fall Branch, Phil Shaner, News Channel 11 Sports. In the movies, Kevin Costner built his field of dreams in his backyard cornfield. Is it time to go again? Oh, no, no, he's going up the playing ball. Good land. We're in the middle of the game here. For these youngsters, their field of dreams is Greenville's Hardin Park. In the movies, the ghost of baseball pass came to play. In the Challenger League, ball players who never got a chance to show their stuff come out to play. I love it. I just. I just um, love playing with all my friends, and I just enjoy it. Lauren displays her love for the game by running out a base hit and sliding into first. Well, see, I was so, so, 
such in a hurry to get to first, I just slid, so. In this league, there are no losers. I want to win, but it's every time I, we play against them, we tie. The games always do end in a tie, and everyone gets to bat and play every position in the field. The Challenger League gives mentally and physically disabled children a chance to be kids. My own son has cerebral palsy, and he's watched his brother play for quite a while now, and that's the way it has been with a lot of these kids. They've, they've watched baseball on TV or watched their siblings play, and they've not, never got to play themselves, so now they're out here in the spotlight. Hey, Just knocking the ball out of the front, knocking it over their hands. I learned how to hit. This is the first year for the league in Greenville, and as you can tell, it's already a big hit. Kathy Lamb is the lady that got it started. She noticed that Knoxville had a challenger league, and she said, why not in Greenville? So like Kevin Costner, she built it, and many special kids have come to play ball.